Hey guys, Tyler here with Boost Junkie Media, and today I kind of wanted to just do a little video uh, talking about the S550 a little bit. Um, I know I've you know talked in the past about things that are coming, and you know some things happened and acquired the Fox body and turning that into more of a uh, a street strip car more than just a street car. Um, but I also have things planned for the S550. So basically, my overall goal is to make the Fox body more strip ready um, not that it can't be a street car and that i can't drive it on the road and then it's not capable of you know driving you know a few hours or even a few hundred miles at a time to do like a drive and drag type event like a race week or something it definitely can do that but it is not you know the most comfortable of cars to ride long distances in all the time um, for something like that, me personally, I like, you know, one of the newer cars with, you know, some of the creature comforts, but we still want to have fun with it. We still want it to be fast and all those things. So basically what we've done um, is we have found a pretty good deal on a supercharger setup for the S550 and we've gone ahead and pulled the trigger on that. It is through uh, ESS tuning. And they have been out for a while. There's a few guys around my area that are running their kits, and they seem pretty pretty impressive. A little bit cheaper priced than you know some of the other kits, the Vortec and Pro Charger and stuff. But from what I'm reading and seeing, the quality is is definitely there. Um, it's overall a nice kit. So that's the one I have decided to go with. Uh, as I said, I have placed the order already, and it actually has shipped. It will be here uh, next week, I think on Wednesday. The shipping tracking is saying right now so that will be coming very very soon um i'm undecided yet where i will be doing the install on that i might be doing it here in my garage or uh you guys may have seen in previous videos my um uh, my real good friend josh he's got a garage down in north carolina um he's got a lift just like i do but he's also got a dyno in his garage so we were talking about maybe doing a uh, a one day, you know, wham bam, thank you, ma'am, in the morning. Morning, sorry about that. In the morning, first thing, we'll put the car as it is on the dyno, strap it down, see what it makes. We'll do the install that day, and then either that evening, that night, or maybe first thing next morning, put it back on the dyno and see what it makes after the blower. Um, that would be that we would be a apples to apples comparison. You know, before the supercharger, after the supercharger, same dyno, same environmental conditions, hopefully, you know, give or take a, a few degrees or whatever, depending on time of day. But it would be a true apples to apples comparison of an NA, you know, 18 plus Gen 3 Coyote setup versus a uh, ESS tuning supercharged same car setup with nothing else really done to it. That would, that'll be it. It's, uh, it's the blower. Um, some 1050 uh, IDX 1050X injectors and a booster pump for the fueling is uh, is basically all we're we're doing and then tuning of course through Palm Beach Dino uh, Rob it looks like he's going to be doing the tuning on it so that might be the other thing that we're going to do with it um, but this video is not just about that this is also to kind of talk about one of the mods I did to kind of prepare for that so there's a company out there called P3 that makes gauges for all different types of manufacturers, not just Mustangs, um, that install fairly trick in different places to kind of look like they came from the factory that way. Um, they're clean in the S550, it goes in the AC vents, which the end gauge, you know, a lot of people also put the end gauge in the AC vents and it works really well. The only issue is it completely blocks the vent from being functional. And also, if you don't put something in the vent and behind the end gauge, then you've got cold air or hot air hitting the back of the end gauge. Um, this P3 setup, there, the the gate, the, the vent is still functional. Um, part of it is, and so the air is still allowed to come out. Plus, P3 themselves say that their units have been tested to be installed in vents. They have been tested under you know condensation and cold temperatures and hot temperatures with your heater on to uh, ensure that they will not fail due to those extreme conditions of heat and cold or hot and cold. So I went ahead and picked one up. We went ahead and installed it in the car. Um, I didn't really get any footage of the install of that. It was pretty straightforward though. Um, but this is basically 
how the gauge looks right here, and this is with it off. Um, I will go ahead and turn the ignition on here, and we'll go ahead and turn it on. And so that is basically how it looks right there. And you can cycle through may have to start the car. All right, so this is gonna be a little bit loud. I have to start the car. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the door here. I'm gonna get you guys a good shot of how it's gonna look. So, so there it is. And what I've got it set to right now is the um, fueling, basically. So this is the fueling in Lambda. You can set it to AFR or Lambda. I per tend to prefer Lambda. Um, so as you can see, it's right about where it should be at 1, 1.0. And you can cycle through different things. So there's AFR, which is what we're in now. It's got a 0 to 60 timer. It's got boost. And I'll, I'll touch on that here a little bit more here in just a few minutes. You can do AFR with like an LC2 uh, wideband O2 sensor if you want. It's got coolant temp. It's got a speed. It's got battery voltage. Um, it's got RPM shift so you can set a shift light. Uh, trans temperature. IAT. EGT which is actually kind of nice because that's one that you can't see. Um, in your, you know, if you have a digital dash or whatever, you don't see anywhere, I don't believe. So EGT, ignition timing is that one right there. Uh, throttle position is right there. And then you're back to AFR. Um, and it's also got the little sweeping bars here, red bars. You can change that sweep so that it'll, you know, get full under certain conditions or get, you know, down to nothing under certain conditions. Um, so that's kind of it. It, it does only show one thing at a time, which, yeah, the end gauge, you know, you can configure that thing to show four or six at a time. But from my experience, if you've got a decently quick car and you're out driving it, you, you can't monitor. It's hard enough to look at a gauge and monitor one item, you know, let alone trying to look at four or six items at the same time. Definitely under wide open throttle. Uh, now, when you're just cruising around, sure, you can monitor thing, you know, multiple things a little bit easier, but typically that's not really an issue for a car when you're just cruising around. It, it's under wide open throttle that you want to be able to sometimes see things. So really being able to monitor one thing to me wasn't a big deal. Also, the, the main reason I got this gauge is that when you go boosted, these cars don't really have a good way to monitor boost. Well, the P3 gauge has an analog boost adapter that you can order with the gauge and it actually has a airline nipple on it where you can run an air hose or airline from your intake manifold somewhere plug it into this little dongle this little adapter and it will actually give real-time boost on the gauge for what this is for what it's seeing so it's a true zero to five volt analog boost gauge um, so you can truly see what your boost is in the intake system of your car. It's not using mass air and a load, you know, load to calculate boost and tell you how much boost you're making. That's how some of the performance pack stuff works, um, which is fine. It gives you a general kind of idea, but it's not precise. It's not going to give you an exact amount. This will give you a down to the tenth of a, of a pound of a boost, how much boost you're actually making in the car. Um, so that, that was very attractive to me. Plus it looks really nice. Um, and then this is what I was talking about with the vent. So as you can see here, the vent is still usable. There is still, you know, there's still air coming out of there right now and you can still close that off if you want. And it looks really nice. Um, install is very simple and straightforward. You know, you pop this, this panel off, pop that out. You can, um, clip that in, run your wire down, you know, down through under here, down under the dash and then plug in your OBD2 port right there. Very straightforward. Um, so yeah, basically, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the car off here real quick. So pretty straightforward. Um, that's, that's the P3 gauge. I think this is the version three of their gauge. I think there's also a V2. 
but I think they added some other features for the V3. Um, it also can read codes, so you can read DTC codes with it, and you can also you can change what things it's uh, checking. So if you know that you're never going to use transmission temp and you don't care that it shows you transmission temp, you can actually go into the configuration mode and remove that. And so as you cycle through the things, that one won't even be in the list. Um, so if you literally only have a couple items you want to monitor, say you want to monitor, you know, uh, your boost, you want to monitor um, ignition timing, and you want to monitor coolant temp, you can remove everything else. And as you cycle, as you hit the button to cycle through, you will only cycle those through those three things. So uh, that's a lot of information I know in a fairly short amount of time. Um, but so far, I'm liking it. Uh, more to come. And like I said, that was for the future because I knew that the supercharger was coming. I wanted to go ahead and have that installed and have that ready to go so that I can run my tube and connect my boost line to it and get an accurate boost reading with the setup coming. So with that being said, um, yeah, big things coming to the channel for both the Fox body as we're wrapping up, you know, some steam port stuff on that. We're also going to be working on the S550 here in the upcoming weeks. Uh, another pretty awesome thing that's happening here on the channel is I'm getting the garage floor here in my garage completely redone um, with a epoxy setup with a uh, polyaspartic polyurea top coat. Um, that should look really nice. The, the, the company that I'm working with is very excited once they came out to kind of do a consult and they saw the cars and everything, they were very excited to uh, do this setup. They said it's going to look really nice. So that should be happening in the next couple of weeks. So there will be a video coming on about that. And yeah, just lots of lots of good stuff happening. So please, guys, if you you know if you like this kind of content, if you like the car stuff, please give me a like, give me a follow on the channel. You know, leave me some comments. Let me know what you want to see, what you don't want to see. You know, which car is your favorite? Do you do you want to see more Fox Body stuff? Do you like the S550? You know, just kind of let me know what you guys think. Um, you know, I'm going to try to bring you both because I, I love both cars. Uh, they're kind of differently purpose cars. Um, so, yeah. So, let me know what you guys think. And with that being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and take off. And we'll see you in the next one.